Hello everybody, it's Christy, your friendly digital technology librarian, and we have reached yet another Friday in 2021, so of course that means I have another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody. Uh, now, in last week's episode, we looked back on 2020 and selected a handful of the best uh, 2020 releases available on the three platforms we have for digital video, and this week, we are going to look ahead, in some cases really far ahead, and recommend a number of titles that have futuristic settings. Uh, as always, these titles are all available entirely for free with the use of your Mylan Broman library card, and they're available on our three digital platforms, which are Clevenet Overdrive, uh, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. So without any further ado, I want to go ahead and jump straight into those recommendations. Okay, our first two recommendations both come from Clevenet's Overdrive, and the first of those is for a film called High Rise. Now, High Rise is an adaptation of a novel, and in this story you're dealing with these skyscrapers that essentially house entire cities. So we're talking about one building, one giant building, that houses the lowest classes, right along with the highest classes and the only thing that essentially separates them are the floors that people live on. Now there's a lot of metaphor that you can unpack in there and you're meant to and it's really a fascinating film to watch because it's thoroughly disturbing um, but when you start to unpack everything about the movie you really start to see a reflection of everyday society. Now, this film focuses in on a brand new resident to this particular skyscraper, and that resident is Dr. Robert Liang, uh, and he's played by Tom Hiddleston, who is a phenomenal, phenomenal performer who you probably know as Loki from the Thor and Avenger films, um, but he's also just a brilliant Shakespearean actor. He's done tons and tons of theater. He's been in a lot of um, indie films. And he puts in a fantastic uh, performance as this character who starts the film with a certain viewpoint and gradually is, I think the best word is probably tainted by the society that he starts to climb within. Um, and, and I think that's really the whole point of this film, the story, the book, is how the world and environment in, in which you live will definitely affect who you are. You have a ton of performances in this uh, particular movie that are absolutely brilliant. You have Jeremy Irons playing both a literal and a figurative architect within this movie. He is almost a deity within this particular building. Uh, you have exceptional performances from uh, Elizabeth Moss, uh, who played Peggy in Mad Men, if you're familiar with the Mad Men series. She was also uh, Zoe Bartlett in the West Wing series. You have uh, Luke Evans, playing a, a really like fiery character with um, revolutionary kind of leanings. Uh, Sienna Miller is in this. Um, it, it, it's just one of those movies where the performances, I think, carry the film. Because at the end of the day, the storyline can be kind of simple. You know, it's a society that's sort of crumbling because of this battle within the classes, which is always a pertinent topic, of course, but it really truly is the acting that elevates this movie to a, a higher level. So if you're looking for something with fantastic performances and a really relevant and important sort of story and theme, I would definitely recommend checking out High Rise. Um, it's exciting, it's thrilling, there's suspense, there's a bit of mystery in it as well. Um, you get a lot of, a, a lot of different genres blended into one. Uh, so, so it's something that will definitely keep you, uh, 
uh, interested and engaged for the entire run of the film. So High Rise on Cleve Nets Overdrive, definitely check that out. Now, my other recommendation from Clevenet for this week is an oldie but a goodie, and it is for the Ghost in the Shell anime movie that came out in 1995. This is like an absolute classic. If you have not seen it, you absolutely have to. Um, this film sort of launched a lot of sort of cybernetic anime series that came after. There's also a television series of Ghost in the Shell, which is also available on Clevenet's Overdrive. So if you like the movie, 100% recommend you check out the TV series. But yes, in Ghost in the Shell, the film, we are sort of chasing this AI uh, that believes itself to be sentient and that we don't really know a lot about. Um, we're living in a world with heavy cybernetics. So you have um, citizens all over in this particular society that are part machine and part human. And it really asks you to question what makes something human? Uh, what makes something a machine? Where is there really a line? Um, and who is the one who makes the decision about those lines. And it's, it's really kind of a fascinating film when you look at anime before this and anime afterwards, you, you really see a definitive line in the sand, kind of like where thematically things start to, to, to move. Um, the writer, director, producer, super famous, Mamoru Oshii, uh, he's done a ton of really great anime before and since, and this is definitely like a masterpiece work for him. Um, the main character is essentially a, a detective who has cybernetics within her and is also questioning the whole concept of humanity. She is relatable in a lot of ways. It's one of those because you're, you're dealing with a society that is so far flung from our own that you always feel a little bit of distance like kind of like an out of body experience. It's, it's hard to, it's hard for me to explain, but while you're watching or while I watch anyway, while I've watched this movie and I've watched it many, many times, I always find myself asking new questions, like noticing things that I didn't see, uh, and, and feeling slightly different than say the previous time that I had watched. So, in that way, I think that this is one of those movies that's always fresh, that's always inter in interesting, that's always relevant. Uh, and I think the question of what is humanity is one of those questions that should always be relevant. Um, the animation, considering it's cell animation, is, is one of those things where it's cell animation and computer animation combined. So since we're talking about that early mid nineties period, you're going to see like the evolution of a new art form really happening in front of you. And this movie does such a good job of melding the two things. Uh, and, and it's just, it really is art. So if you're interested in heavy sci-fi with a lot of esoteric questioning going on, um, with, fascinating AI with a lot of violence, with a lot of um, mystery and intrigue, 100%. Please check out the Ghost in the Shell movie on Clevenet's Overdrive. Uh, check out the television series by the same name, Ghost in the Shell. Um, these are fantastic stories that I think are important to see, that are legitimately important to watch. So again, Ghost in the Shell, Cleavette's Overdrive, a must watch.
Okay, moving right along to our recommendations from Hoopla, I'm going to kick those off with yet another anime film. This one, however, is entitled Redline and focuses in on um, the galaxy's most exciting, dangerous, ridiculous car race. Um, this race is only held like once every five years, I want to say, and it's no holds barred. Like, as long as you cross that finish line first, you are the winner. So the question becomes, for a lot of the film, what are you willing to do for success? Um, your main character is named JP. He's like this wild and crazy guy uh, who is a massive daredevil and is known as such. You've got this crazy, successful female driver named uh, Sonoshi. Uh, there's definitely a love line between the two of them. But does that love line get in the way of who will win? Like, can cutthroat nature, can love survive cutthroat nature and cutthroat tendencies? Who is going to be more cutthroat? Who is going to want the win more? Um, and then, of course, you've got all the other characters uh, competing with these two. So it's just this cacophony of um, strong-willed people and beings who want that fame that comes from winning this particular race. Now, on top of like a really exciting story, because it is, I mean, anytime you have a tale that deals with a race or one particular definitive goal that has a time limit, you know, you're going to have something that's going to be suspenseful and exciting and that's going to keep you on your edge of, the edge of your seat. But when you layer other themes on top of it, it just makes it more and more rich. So you've got that little bit of love line between JP and Sunoshi. You've got, I'm trying to think of a way to say it without spoilers, but you've got You've got other motivations from other characters layered on top of that. What And it becomes a question of what's the most important thing to any of these characters. Um, on top of that exciting kind of story, you've got some phenomenal hyper stylized art. This isn't art that you will usually see in anime or in animation in general. It's It just has this sort of flair to it. You've got some crazy color schemes going on, but just the lines of character designs are, are very different. And uh, I, I love anytime you have art that's outside of the norm, uh, because I think that also tells the story as much as any, as, as much as the dialogue does. Um, so, so in any case, if you're looking for something exciting, if you already like anime, if you don't know anime and you like race stories, stories about adventure, stories about um, primary goals, uh, if you like um, films about um, outer space, if you like science fiction in general, please, please, please check out Redline. Uh, oh, if you like movies with ridiculously good soundtracks, Redline's for you as well. Uh, so again, Redline available on Hoopla. Highly, highly, highly recommended. My second recommendation from Hoopla is for a little anthology film called Doomsday Book. Uh, now, Doomsday Book is uh, South Korean, so it is Korean language. There are subtitles, but as all my subtitled recommendations, it is 100% worth it to check out, even if you don't like subs. Uh, this one is so, so trippy. Um, it follows three different short stories. One about um, sort of a post-apocalyptic zombie world. Another about uh, whether or not robots have souls and are capable of teaching humans anything about life in the world. And the final one is about an internet purchase gone wrong. <laughs> now, these all seem very far flung from one another, but you do have a similar thread. Um, and you, in, in all of the stories, you have exceptionally good acting. That's, 
that's one of the things that I loved about Doomsday Book. It didn't matter what the presentation was, uh, whether it was set in a more like creepy genre or if it was in a totally absurdist uh, tone, the acting was always on point. Um, Doomsday Book, if you can guess, definitely has an overarching theme of end of the world. Uh, but it's how we get to that point and what the lead up to that point is that makes these stories so interesting and thoroughly entertaining. I, I know like the end of the world probably seems like it would be one of those melancholy, depressing films, but it absolutely isn't. It's really funny in spots. Like some of, even like the more serious uh, stories, have really amusing moments. And I love, I loved that about this. Like I laughed, I, I literally laughed out loud a number of times. Uh, just because there's so many absurd moments uh, that you can't help it. It's, it's, it is really just so entertaining. So if you like anthology films, if you like something that will make you think and make you laugh, if you like um, stories that approach one particular theme in multiple ways. That's the other thing that's really cool. The whole concept of Doomsday, but taken from very different viewpoints. Uh, please check out Doomsday Book. It is a fantastic film. It is a lot of fun. Uh, and it will still make you laugh while it also makes you think. So Doomsday Book on Hoopla. Now, my last Hoopla recommendation is for a really, really solid movie that I knew absolutely nothing about before I started looking for Rex for this week, and that's called Osiris Child. Now, Osiris Child takes place in a far-flung future where Earth is colonizing different planets, and for whatever reason, at a certain point in this particular story, we get to a moment where an orbiting station decides that it has to destroy this newly colonized planet uh, in order to keep a particular secret um, safe. Now, there's a father on this um on this particular space station who has a daughter who's on the colonized planet. And so the movie really gets going when he discovers the plan to destroy the colony and he decides he has to get back down there in order to save his daughter, to rescue her. Um, I, in general, I will admit this, I'm, I'm a sucker for stories like this. Anytime you have, um, parents rescuing kids. I'm always all about that. But this one in particular, like it, it just, I was so, it was so unexpected because again, I'd not heard about this movie. It didn't star anybody I was familiar with. Like, I think the biggest name is Kellen Lutz, whose big claim to fame was being in the Twilight movies. Not that I'm knocking the Twilight movies, but like when that's the biggest title that you've been in, um, and then you're suddenly in these other smaller indie films, it's hard to show up on people's radar. Anyway, um, this particular film was crazy exciting pretty much from the beginning to the end. Like you've got, um, wicked good chase scenes. You've got tons of explosions. You've got, um, prison riots. You've got, I mean, it's, there's something happening every moment of this film, like that will get you, that will suck you in. Um, so if you're looking for something insanely exciting, if you're looking for something that has a great father daughter bonding storyline, if you are looking for redemption tales, um, if you're looking for something that actually has seriously moving moments that are thoroughly unexpected, check out Osiris Child. It's, it's an, it's, it's a really entertaining film. Also available again on Hoopla.
Okay, my last two recommendations, of course, come from our canopy service. And the first of those recs is for the cult sci-fi classic, uh, The Quiet Earth. Now, I watched Quiet Earth years and years ago when I was in a college film studies class. And I remember back then, as today, thinking, wow, this movie is trippy as all get out. Um, in this particular movie, you are primarily following one sort of average everyday scientist named Zach. He works for a global energy, uh, a global energy project, and he wakes up one day and he's, he seems like he's the only person left alive on the planet. And we don't know why he's, he's just it. Um, and that's the question. Why is he the only one left? As the film progresses, we discover two other people who are also alive and also asking the exact same question. Why, why am I still here? Why have I been selected to be one of the survivors when nobody else has? Um, and that's really like a massive, massive arc of the film. Like, figuring out what makes them special, what makes it so that they were the ones to still exist on this quiet earth. Um, as you would guess, like, you have, like, an emotional state that continually deteriorates as this question becomes more and more heavy, more and more pervasive in your, your existence. Like, why am I here? What's the whole point? What's going on? And while he, while your main character, Zach, makes the attempt to make connections with these two remaining other characters on Earth, um, you have to ask, is that enough? Is, is that is that it? What else is there? And, you know, by the time you get to the end of the movie, which is one of those crazily debated endings, like I still remember like people were like shouting in class as to what the end means. Uh, you know, the journey to get to that question that obviously is quite open-ended if we were having arguments back in 2004, um, that you know, I still had the same questions today, like in 2021, what does it all mean? Uh, and I think that's kind of the whole enjoyment of the film, like asking these sort of esoteric questions, like how they pertain to your life, how they pertain to the film, like, and, and watching it with somebody else who also enjoys that kind of a movie, I think that's also key. So if you have a friend who's a really big film fan who likes, you know, your more murkily plotted out storylines, you guys should definitely watch The Quiet Earth. Um, it will make you think, it will make you ask questions, and it will definitely entertain you. Uh, I think reactions are as much a point of entertainment as the actual, as the film itself. So I would strongly recommend watching it with some, with a friend. Uh, but other than that, it's, it, it really is a great, great classic. Like I understand why it's considered a cult classic, um, because it's something, it's a story that will keep you talking for ages after you finish watching it. So again, Quiet Earth available on Canopy. And for my very last recommendation for this week, um, I have a movie called Equals. Uh, Equals is also available via Hoopla. So if you prefer to use Hoopla, you 100% can use it on, uh, can check it out on there. Now, Equals stars uh, Kristen Stewart as Nia and Nicholas Holt as Silas. Uh, Stewart was, oh, was Bella in the Twilight films. But she's actually a really quite solid actress. Uh, Nicholas Holt played Beast in the um, X-Men First Class movie. 
these are both really solid performers and their story is at the heart of this movie. So in Equals, it takes place in a world where essentially human emotion is outlawed. And everything and everyone is on sort of the same flat baseline emotional state at all times. Um, human touch is essentially non-existent. You don't have emotional connections to other people. And, you know, because of this lack of emotion, you've gotten rid of all of the trouble that can brew and breed through that. But you've also gotten rid of what is an essential part of humanity and being human. Um, and of course, betwixt these two, uh, forbidden romance blooms uh, due to a series of events. They suddenly have feelings like that they've never had or experienced before. And they have to figure out how to survive in this world where having feelings of any kind, let alone like romantic feelings, is not allowed. It's simply outlawed. Uh, and the consequences are dire. <laughs> um, you, you're essentially ended should you start to develop what we consider basic emotions. Um, and throughout this movie, you are asked to question what is really too far because obviously a world where emotions are outlawed too far, but where, where does that sort of line get drawn? Because you do discover, you know, when you think about it, certain emotions are almost always, almost always result in negative events. But should any of those be outlawed? Where, where does that line land? And this film does an excellent job of making you question and ask that kind of thing. Um, what I'd also found really fascinating about Equals is that it definitely gives off a Gattaca vibe. I love the movie Gattaca, by the way. It's fantastic. If you've never seen it, 100% rec highly recommended. Um, but it, it definitely tr tries to have a Gattaca vibe, I think. Uh, and I, I feel it's it's successful in a lot of ways without being like a mock mockery of the movie. Um, it has that austere look to it. it we, I mean, the production values are really, really amazing. It, it looks like this beautiful, overly clean world. Uh, and, and that's what it's going for. I mean, you want that austere sort of like sterile vibe to be going through to, to be moving through every element of the story because that's the world these characters are living in i think sterile is the best most perfect world word to describe it um so besides this sort of esoteric questioning kind of sort of film you've got the romance element you've got um an, an exciting escape attempt sort of element to it so you've got sort of a capery vibe to to things, um, and just in general, you it's 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 a very well well plotted, wonderfully beautiful film. Like a lot of ways, that sort of austere, sterile look on screen is visually stunning. So if that's a vibe that you really enjoy, if you like films like that, if you like movies like Gattaca. I would definitely recommend Equals. I I really enjoyed the movie overall. I thought it was, it had solid acting, a good storyline, and a fantastic production look to it. Uh, so yes, Equals also available on Canopy. So with that, we have finished with this week's Film Rec Friday. If you have any recommendations for other people that you think they should 100% be watching, please do comment below. Let us know. I'm always looking for recommendations because I just enjoy watching movies in general, whether they're campy or whether they're thought provoking. I love them all. Um, additionally, if you have recommendations for future themes that you'd like us to cover, 
please comment with those as well. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and call this week's Film Rec Friday closed. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, and hopefully I will see you again soon. We'll see you next week. Bye.